This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Somewhat here you may find out Certain people not like me Everyone got a spaghetti thing now Makes true me I do it like Nike But me not fear no guy now No matter how hard them must fight me Me just a go and do me thing now Me just a do it like Nike 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 Them one pies in me, show me thing up Pass me and them girlfriend a link up Dark way you did that, when they think tough No food, clean water, fi drink up Now me and the dog, them a link up Big truck, 20 inch rim, just a spin up The pioneer just a kick up And a hip hop heart a lip up You can't see the star to the tint up and good afternoon, good afternoon everybody. It's a super Thursday, sure happy it's Thursday. This is Pearly in the house, filling in for Naughty and Talking Heads here on Guardian Radio 96.9. How everybody doing out there? Man, I thought we was going to get a little cold front and things is going to cool up, look like things getting hotter. Is that the right way to say it? Hotter? But it's getting a little, it's, it, it's, I thought I was going to be able to pull out one jacket. As soon as I look at the jacket, it, the, the better start going back up. So I ain't t-shirt. But how are everybody doing? Getting ready for the weekend. Best of the best starts today sailing. I had the Long Island boys in town. That should be some good stuff. So happy for our sponsors, you know, BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Center, the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, Deposit Insurance Corporation, Dunkin' Donuts, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, Grand Bahama News, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, Kelly's Home Center, KFC, Lois Wholesale, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, Scotia Bank, and Tropical Gyros. Thank you so much for making it possible for Naughty and I to be here. It's good. So what's been happening out there? Let's see what's going on in the front page of The Guardian this morning. Economic growth outperforms 2019. GDP growth 8.6% higher than the first half of 2022. Is that a... F anyway. Written policies for human treatment of migrants. Education minister, we need to revisit corporal punishment. Now that's something we got to talk about. You, you want to be churning in school? Pintard questions how PM could be shocked by IMF deficit, deficit projection. I, that's, that's a good question. See in the business section. Government releases monthly fiscal summary reports after long delays. Good to see that. Performance da data for end of fiscal year 2022-2023 and first month of fiscal year 2023-2024 revealed. PM urged to take stand against fossil fuel ex expansion at COP28. And Bahamas among top five destinations for Midwest Americans in 2024. That's my, that's my school state, Minnesota. Yeah. Get some Minnesotans and pale people come get some sun on them. That would be nice. We got a special guest today. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to, to get away from, from by-elections and all that, and let's talk about some serious matters, you know. And I remember as a little boy... I hit my sister. I ain't gonna say which one, but I hit my sister. And my father snatched me and really roughed me up. And he said something to me that resonated with me 50 plus years later, or 50 years later. A man who has to hit a woman is a coward. You never see me raise my hand to your mother. Don't you ever raise your hand to a woman. And I've taken that with me all my life. I went on some meds one time, and, and it, it raised my anxiety. And I was trying to say, I got to leave. I got to get out of this house. And my wife at the time sat on the floor of the house and said, you're not leaving. I think woman moved my way. She said, mommy, I said, you know I ain't going to touch you. She said, that's why I sit there, because I know you can never do that. So when I see battered women and, and, and children, it, it, it gets a part of me that, that ooh, that's unforgiving. 
And this is Women's Week in the Bahamas. But not only that, we're celebrating until I think the, the 10th of December, the movement towards stopping violence amongst women and gender violence, and particularly women and children. But you got to say gender because a women's beats a man do now. And, and I thought it was only fitting because every time I hear this talks about this person, she is the one who talks about it the most. And so I said, you know what, let me ask if she wants to come and talk about this a little bit. Because there are some things that we need to get done in our country when it comes to gender violence, when it comes to violence against women and children. And violence is not just hitting them, you know. It's not just beating on them. That's not just, that's not only, a, that's a form of it. That's the worst form of it. But when you're denying them certain rights and things like that, it's also a part of it. When you lock up a house that she can't come out, that's a, that's a form of violence that's, ooh. Or you're calling all kind of names and belittling her and telling the, the young boy he's dumb and stupid. All that is a part of violence that, that I don't tolerate. My kids can tell you I've never, ever once called them dumb, stupid, or anything like that, ever. I don't call women that B word. My ex-wife could tell you I've never, ever called her name or, or curse her out or anything. Never. We've had arguments here. That it, it, and, and vice versa, you know. Because you have some women who are very abusive to their men. But the men too shame to say anything. Or embarrassed. Or, or question their manhood. But the worst part of it is when we do it to kids. When we abuse kids whether it's physically, sexually, anyway. That's our future. But I've said enough about this, and I, and I hope my preload was good enough. And, and I want to welcome my special guest today, um, Senator the Honorable Maxine Seymour, who I know this is, this is something very dear to you. So I, I just wanted to, if you could give me a little, like, and we got a caller, caller, don't go nowhere. We can take you in a second. Don't go nowhere. But just give me a little light on, on, on what, this, what, is, what this week is about and what these, these 10 days or 16 days was all about so we can get our listeners to get a better idea. I tried to explain as best I could, but I think I was getting a little too emotional. Well, you did a good job. Hello, Pearlie, and hello, Bahamas. And thank you so much for this opportunity to raise awareness on women and children's rights and challenges. And um, yes, you said it right. Saturday past, which was November 25, was the International Day... International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And um, this year's theme is Unite, Invest to Prevent Violence Against Women and Girls. And a part of that theme is that there's no excuse for violence against women and girls. But on Saturday past, November 25th, that started 16 days of activism in terms of against gender-based violence. And so, yes, indeed, that is what's going on right now. Of course, we have to raise awareness every day, but for these 16 days, we're particularly focused on it. You know, you'd see orange ribbons and around town, and, and that's what that's all about. It ends on December 10th, which is International Human Rights Day. And of course, um, women's rights are human rights, and any kind of abuse towards women and girls is a violation of their human rights. Amen. Let's, let's take our first caller. Call you on the air. How are you doing? Why are you like calling my government name, man? I can't complain. Thank God for life. What's up? You sound a little far away from me now. You got me on a speaker or something like that because you sound like you 10 miles away from me. I can hardly hear you. Mr. Producer, that ain't me. That ain't you, right? That he's my baby producer saying that's you. Come off that, okay. come off that air button. Put the phone to your mouth, boy. Okay, yeah. If if I'm out, you know the bubble of acting funny. Bubble, yeah, okay. Okay, now, what what um what um what um Palestinians and Israel uh, fighting for? That's a good question. Huh? That's what a good question. That's another good question. It, all these are human rights land. violations, aren't they? Fight for land. For the people in the Bahamas, give me our land. People taking our land. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. We're driving it. We're playing in this country. People fighting for what they got, and we're giving it away. I got you. Now, let me come on to your... Um, um, let's talk about our land now. Uh -huh. Let me ask you a question, my little brother. If a woman put her dress and oil to spoil you up, or come to look for a knife, what, what would you do? 
<laughs> y'all, y'all think you're sharp, you know. No, no, but listen to me. No, no, hold on. I, 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 hear me, hear me. Yes, I would have to defend myself. I understand that. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But, no but. So she, don't talk like that, but behemoth, behemoth, most behemoth men I know don't hit women. I don't hit women. No, most behemoth, most behemoth men I know don't hit women too, but we do have a chunk of behemoth men who's beat women. But then and some of them is brag about it. But then a real man, real man, despite man, don't hit women. I agree with you, and that's the point I'm trying to be trying to raise awareness so we can get a better understanding that we don't beat up on women. One hey, my last son going to school the other day, and I see somebody going to school, and I had to stop him up. And I was him for night, but I got the head master before me call. I can beat him bad, and then those boys beat for me. This boy, they left the IP and the CNN. See the Bahamas, West Country. But anyhow, that's all I got. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Like I said, a part of this year's theme is that there's no excuse right. for violence against women and girls. And the thing is that in our country especially, we have a way of justifying wrongdoing and it gets to victim blaming. And so we say, of course I hit her because like he said, she boiled grits, whatever, put on me, which I'm sure is like a rare situation. I'll tell you, I attended a seminar on Monday pass and um, <clears throat> the crisis center cited some recent cases of things that happened right down to women's private parts being lit afire as they sleep, and so many other example after example after example that have happened to women. And while, of course, I'm not saying that women are perfect, and like you said, men are battered too, the reality is, is that we can't make an excuse because she didn't give you access to your, her phone, which is her phone, because she doing it, you know, she texting, you don't know who she texting, or she on the phone and she ain't talking loud enough for you to hear, or she went out in something and, or you can't reach her. That's not a reason to beat her. It's no reason to hit a woman or a girl or anyone, in fact, because all forms of violence are unacceptable and I condemn them all. I agree. Call up. You're on the air. How you doing? Good afternoon to you, Mr. Wally. No, this is Mr. Wally. Hello. This, this, this much better looking than Wally. See, don't, oh, see, I should just hang up on you for calling okay, me Wally. Okay, well, I mean, I, man, I could apologize. Pearly, but, pearly. Uh, try pearly. I am not too big to apologize. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, good afternoon. I'm good. Uh, to the lady, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I am not in no support of a woman being abused. I have two beautiful daughters. No sons. Oh, you good? Your daddy's your a girl daddy. Yes, but I am baffled and disturbed with this woman' rights. And let me ask you a few questions. Fair enough. What is in this country that a woman cannot accomplish? When you all go wrong talking about this woman' rights and woman is there? Explain that to me. I don't understand that. Well, I'm happy you asked because I'll start with the Constitution. You know, I have a friend who I went to school with who grew up here whose parents are very involved and active in this community, and she's only one example. She happened to go to school, you know, in London, happened to meet someone in class, happened to marry them, happened to decide to stay in London. She is a Bahamian woman who happens to live in London. And when she and her husband give birth to their children, she does not have the opportunity to automatically pass on Bahamian citizenship. Now, if her brother had gone to school and met a girl in class and decided he liked her and he asked her to marry him and they decided they'd live somewhere else and she, this person who's a non-Bahamian, married to a Bahamian man, gives birth to her child, her child is automatically a Bahamian. So while there are multiple examples of gender inequity legislatively in terms of policy, in terms of program, let's start right there. Because Bahamian women do not have the same rights to pass on their citizenship as Bahamian men. And that's completely unjust. Could I respond? Sure. One of the biggest problems that I see in the country and in the, in the world, this liberated liberal movement, and the traditional value that this country was once built on, this liberated feminist movement is trying to change it, but the principle of God will never change. Well, what, is, what is the, what and, is, back up a little me? bit. I want you to back, you say liberated movement. What is it changing in the country? This so, liberated feminist movement, uh -huh. who is telling God that God has made a mistake, and they're using this word gender equality. No, but hold when on, this I think you're mixing up a bit. On Christian values. Yes. And 
principal, principal Val off. Let me let me ask you a question. What let mistake? Me, me no, no, but I, I I can't let you I, I can let you finish, but go I can't ahead. let you go on and say women are saying God make a mistake. In which way are women saying God make a mistake? I want you to give me an example. Competing because they are competing with the principle of the Bible. And what is the principle of the Bible they're the competing with? The principle of the Bible is that the, 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 the president has already been set in the book of Genesis. Now let me just say this. Let me, in the book of Genesis, the, pre, the president has already been set by God. One. Two. These poorly socialized young men, and I disagree with all poorly socialized young men. Who born them? Who structured them? Maybe if the men were there and the women weren't raising them by themselves in most and cases. And this is why, fine, this is why the principle of the Bible would never change because the president is already set from a biblical point of view. But what president? I need you to be a little more children. specific. Huh? you you saying the president has been, what president has been set? In the book of Genesis. What is the president that is in the book of Genesis? Tell me A, B, and C. What is the president that has the been set? The president is this, husband, wife, children. When God okay. brought Adam, to, when brought God bring Adam, to Eve to Adam, He set the precedent. He wanted a companion, so He brought him a companion. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Do uh, me a favor can. before you go on. Exactly. Right, sorry, sorry. Just a quick question for you. Women, where where, where did God take the bone from that He made the woman? Boys, now they cry and fall. How are they poorly? How are we poor? How are you blaming women for because poorly socialized boys? Fifty percent of the children are born. The persons who want to have fun rather than building family. No, no, I can't let you say that because the, it takes two to make a Hold on, hold on. It takes two to make a child. Fine, I agree. And it takes two to and it takes two to raise a child. It takes the reason. As a man, as a man, when you lay your seed, you gotta be responsible. So when the man walk away, you cannot be blaming the woman for, for poorly socializing. This is why I had my children in wedlock. Yeah, but you can't blame the women for that if no, they the trust this man. Family, the feminist movement is trying to change. No, I can't family. let you say that. that I, I, I cannot let you say that. I think it's no, more the liberal movement. I think it's more the liberal movement that is changing the family. Is trying to replace the traditional family. That's where the problem is. I, I just think the liberal movement, because we all want to be too liberal, right. and we're allowing, we're allowing... Anyway, I hear you call it. Thanks for calling. You know, sadly, we live in a very patriarchal society, and um, for some odd reason, people feel as if women wanting to have rights that they deserve as human beings is somehow women trying to master or dominate or take over the world. Like, they see it as world or country domination, when really it's not. We're just asking for what we deserve as equal citizens in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And the reality is, is that Women do head households, the majority of them in our country, but it's not by choice, like you said. The reality is, is that the men aren't, in some cases, they're not taking up their rightful roles, and we're not holding them accountable as a society. We're just saying, oh, the women, the, you know, you'll hear mommy, oh, well, he, you know. No, it's the father's job as well. When something happens, it's the mom. When someone, you know, the child is sick, the mom, in most cases, have to call and or figure it out. What about the men? Even when people interview for jobs in terms of gender, discrimination, and challenges, when you're being hired for a job, in many cases, if an employer is hiring a woman, they kind of want to know how many children you have because they're trying to figure out how many days off from work you know, you're going to have. But they'll hire a male and they don't say how many children you have. We should hold both equally accountable because, like you say, they both have children. I saw, you know, in the 70s, in, in, in my last years of high school, Somebody was pointing something out. And, and I'm just here talking to you. It's just popping into my head right now. You saw young men driving their girlfriends' cars, dropping them to night school after work. And all you're seeing is if there's 40 people in the class, 37 of them are women. And their boyfriends drop them off. And as their boyfriends drop them off, they go to hang out and party. But then these women get more empowered. These women get educated. And then we won't blame them for saying they want to take over. But we don't want to take over. I know. Let's take this call. Call her, you're on the air. We ought to take over. Call you there. Are you it's gone? Are you going. still there? Hey, buddy, what's up? Right there, my brother. What you saying? Everything good, man. I think I heard, and good afternoon to you guests. Good afternoon. Um, Ma'am, I heard you say something that I just can't believe is happening in this country. You, you said that women's 
private party being lit a fire while they're asleep. Well, on Monday past, there was a, a seminar that was streamed live, and as a part of it, we had persons who have been victims speak, and then we had persons who work with victims speak, and they gave multiple examples. For example, one of a boyfriend running a lady down on a bus stop, you know, and really beating her, like she had to end up on the bus with most of her clothes off and just trying to run from him. These are examples that have come before the court. And um, yes, more than one of them, one of them in particular, you know, the lady went to sleep. I think the gentleman may have found out that she might have no longer been interested in him. And um, yeah, he poured whatever on her and he got something and he lit her a fire and she woke up to be lit a fire. In another instance, the lady, she was fully clothed and everything, but she got lit a fire and even with the clothes on, I understand, suffered third degree burns. And the reality is, is that that's only some examples. And, you know, they talked about it starting in some cases because of simple things like a cell phone and they even cited previous examples. So I'll tell you, for example, they brought up the lady who I think we all recall who may have who worked at Patelco, whose boyfriend killed her. This was years ago. I even remember the case very well. And they said that he said that he imagined, like in his mind, he thought that, you know, she, she might have been having an affair with her boss. Not that she was having an affair, you know, but that he thought she might have been. And so the reality is, is that women are suffering... I mean, major danger, and like I said, many of them shared day to day in this country. And people, a lot of people turn a blind eye or they pretend that it doesn't happen or they justify it because I've heard, you know, she don't have a right or he paying the bill. And let's just clarify that violence is not just physical. And Pearlie said it at the beginning. And so there are women who are being withheld funding, you know, financially, emotional um, violence. Some women every day are being told, you know, you're stupid, you're ugly, nobody will like you, you know, other than me, ain't nobody else wants you. Like, it's just the list goes on in terms of what people suffer in relationships regularly in this country. And yes, being um, sat a fire, that's wow. only... That's only some of the examples. Wow, wow, wow. I, I mean, I am seriously amazed. That, it's, it's that some stories are out there. Happening some stories country. are out there. Wow. I, um, I applaud you, ma'am, for being on this show and raising, raising awareness. Thank you, this, sir. This, 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 this is, man. Thanks for calling. Wow. Thanks for calling. Thank you for calling. Uh, we take this next call, and then we take a break right after this call. Okay, Mr. Producer, call you on the air. Hey, that's your guess. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm appalled at some of the, the things that the young lady's saying, but you know, I have two daughters, and I have a, a one-year-old son, right, Pearlie? But uh, she, I, I was glad she mentioned something that she says, we're well, human rights state, right? So human rights is based on a level of consciousness. Most of us would really like to think that we have human rights. But when we really look at it, it only exists in theory. It doesn't exist here in the Bahamas. I'll tell you why. All right. This is reciprocal that you're talking about, the violence against one another. So, like Stephen Duncan said today on my show, which I'm really, but I was really impressed with his uh, rhetoric, right? Uh -huh. So here's where the problem is. <clears throat> we have no human rights here, because let me tell you why. The collective, uh, there's a selfish collective. We don't have any collective agenda. We are not cohesive as a people. This is what the sch schism is destroying us, okay? Now, we have here in this country, I saw, well, I saw a, 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 a sister slap up a mechanic friend of mine. And she's a bully to him, you know. Maybe be, he was inebriated or whatever. But I, I've seen women abuse, man. I've yeah, had, it's on both sides mm -hmm. of the divide. Yes, yeah, I, I, I've had a girlfriend who, 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 who years ago who went to the gym and was physical, and because I was slim, she thought she could beat me. <laughs> so I, had, you know, and I never hit a woman in my life. But you know, she, she attacked me one night. I was going out. She came out of the bushes with at me with a stick. With a stick. So you, 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 women are different. They, they, they're very violent. Some of them. Just some, some, and, and both sides. Both them. some women and men are violent. How about women did that? Stalk me, follow me in the States. Wait, wait, wait. Well, anybody tell so you be that, yeah, tell you be that good? Yeah, but uh, well, whatever it is, buddy, I don't know. <laughs> but listen to me. Another problem is, since it's World Human Rights Day, right? Let me tell you what's going on in this country. Police officers executed a search warrant at a residence, right? Uh -huh. Now, subsequently, money was missing. Now, they came with no cameras, no numbers. Sometimes they wear masks. Nobody knows who they are, uh -huh. right? And they're able to do... I had an officer told me, uh, he could kill me at any time, Okay. So I'm not into y'all and this human rights. This is all BS. There's no human rights. 
Because when you have to go to them to report something, and there's no independent oversight committee, we all are just BSing around on the radio. We don't care about one another. Like, what I'm saying is, how could you come into somebody's house without a camera and without identification to say, well, this is officer so, Mr. Officer so? So it is all about concealment, and it seems to me as if when the PLB's in power, these guys are allowed to get away with a bunch of, I mean, everything, man, everything. You, the nefarious activity on the force, as a matter of fact, we don't even have an independent journalist to go and get the government. And as a matter of fact, in a first world country, you will have a police accountability report. We don't ever have these. They come and talk about this and that, but your accountability report is actually given in detail. You know, if they dis- disclose to you, they, as a matter of fact, you will have to get a lawyer. They will never disclose to you even the nature of the cases being reported. And Fair the enough. corruptions unit is just a, a revolving door of oblivion and nothingness. So until then, don't come tell me about no human rights, man. Deep breath. I let, let's take this break, and when you come back, we'll comment on it. We take a quick break. This is Pearly filling in for Naughty and Talking Heads. We get little touches here. Let's take a little break. We'll be right back. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets. At KFC, we hand bread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets, in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. Let me ask you a few questions. What's your name? Pam. Favorite food? Steak. Beer or wine? Wine. Is your money safe? Mm, It's under my bed, I guess so. Are you serious? Yeah, why? Unless your money is in a bank or credit union that's a member of the Deposit Insurance Corporation, there's no guarantee it's safe. Yeah, but what if something happens to the bank? Your Bahamian dollar deposits are insured up to $50,000, so you'd still be ahead. Plus, your mattress might catch fire. Then what? Man, those banks and credit unions are looking good right about now. Visit the DIC's website at www.dic.ba. Yes, protection for your money, guaranteed with DIC. Get ready for an electrifying experience. It's Scotiabank's People's Choice John Canoe Practice Parade. The Scotiabank team kicks off the festivities at 7 p.m. with unforgettable entertainment. Feel the rush as seven A-Division groups practice on bay right after the magical Christmas tree lighting ceremony. At 9 p.m., come dance to the John Canoe with your favorite group in a practice rush. Scotiabank proudly presents the People's Choice Practice Parade Thursday, November 30th in Rawson Square. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Your pumpkin favorites are back at Dunkin'. Indulge your pumpkin passion with fresh-baked pumpkin spice donuts, mouth-watering muffins, and delightful munchkins. Or sip a Dunkin' Pumpkin Spice Signature Latte made with a rich blend of espresso, pumpkin spice, and vanilla flavors, all topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. Available hot or iced, Dunkin' offers the ultimate pumpkin coffee experience. Head to Dunkin' today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. We're back here on Talking Heads I'm on Guardian Radio. This is Pearly filling in for Naughty. have my special guest, uh, Senator the Honorable Maxine Seymour. She tell me she had one child. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you really was like in your late 20s. Let me read these texts. You ain't got to comment on that. Good day, Naughty. This is this Pearly. So, uh, Petty should resign from the deputy speaker. Adrian Gibson might have more charges that... Then Petty, but the crime are basically the same. I think Petty should be put up on charges. Also, where is the fairness? Um, great show is Pearly. The day almost gone and no one will get killed. It's a good day. Great show is Pearly. I born in 1977 in school. We used to get cut up and never kill us. Pearly, you 7 foot 10 and 298 pounds and you hit your sister Pearly. You wrong for that. Call her and apologize. We give her the gift from John Bill. <laughs> I apologize to my loving sister every day. Pearly, who's the first sick women to throw hot grits? Oh, Lord. 
Apparently, this topic going left. You just did go left, and I let you carry me that way. Apparently, you need to learn to hang up on some persons, especially when they're talking fool. A lot of women hate us in this country. Yeah, but I can let you have your say. If you don't make yourself look bad, out on you. When I was leaving my ex-wife, she hit me violently, repeatedly on my way out the door. When I defended myself, she put a knife to my throat. When she finally saw the level of beast in me after I defeated her in the combat, she tried to play victim. Not all women deserve... Ah, uh, no comment. Good afternoon, Pearly, and to Senator Seymour. Tell the Senator that she misses one tenant. Patriarch and theocracy are the overarching things that influence our social views and beliefs. That's interesting. It is. It's it's very interesting. And um, the reality is is that we've been so conditioned. It's, It's going to take some time to really rethink our approach to things. Now, now I kind of old-fashioned, but I believe that the man is the head of the house. I, I believe in that, but I don't believe the man is the dictator of the house. I believe that they work as a team, they do things together as a team and achieve things, but he is the face or the <coughs> front runner or whatever you want to call it, but they do it together. Very seldom when, in, in my marriage days, I wouldn't say me. i say me and my wife or my wife and I made a decision. Even when I talk about it, I say my ex-wife and I made a decision. It was always as a team. But this is the thing, and that's the caller earlier who kept um, referring to the Garden of Eden, but with no, like, actual reference. That was my thing. Women and men have their roles, and I do agree, and they are biblical, and I, like you, I agree in all the traditional conservative Christian views. But the woman, when God made her, he took her from the side of the man. Yep. And so there's equality. They're both human beings. And so, yes, as a male, as a husband, you should be a provider, protector, and priest for your wife. And all the more, you're commanded to love her like Christ loves the church. Amen. So you should never raise your hand yeah, to hit her. You shouldn't raise your voice to speak ill to her. You shouldn't withhold finances from her. You shouldn't decide to consume her body. When she is not up to it. No, and not. so these are things that just because you're the head, headship doesn't mean that you are the ruler, commander, and um, that this is your property. That's not what it means. It's exactly. a level of responsibility yes. in the relationship. Yes. And that's what people miss. And because women want to be treated as human beings equal to men doesn't mean on any level that like I think some people think, oh, we're trying to take over the world and we're going to put the man all in a corner and lock them up. No, we're just wanting what we deserve as women. And that's fairness, equal protection, justice, and to be treated properly. I don't have no baby. So when, I, so, you you, so when you look at these things, you know, you, it, 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 oh boy. It, it evens out and, and, and we have to show that kind of respect. We got a call on there. Call you on there. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hi, Senator. Hi, hi. This is Sheldon Johnson. Hey, hi, Mr. Johnson. Yeah. I just want to just note one thing, because oftentimes I hear individuals always note the Constitution. First, the Constitution, no Constitution in the world can discriminate, none, under constitutional law. But oftentimes I hear, and I, I address this on in front of the Constitutional Committee, uh, the former attorney, to the former Attorney General, Alison Maynard Gibson, I challenge her, in fact, to name the eight different uh, methods of citizenship uh, listed in the Constitution as a part of the citizenship. And the only one that does not provide a part of the citizenship is for an unmarried Bohemian male having a child outside of the Bahamas. There's a part of it for married Bohemian women, single Bohemian women, uh, married Bahamian men outside of the, outside of the countries. Inside of the countries, there's a pathway for all of them. But the only one that's not made mention in the Constitution is a single Bahamian male outside of the country. Well, but so why, why said, there's a pathway for them, you still have to go through, you're not automatic, you still have to no, jump no, through No, no, the hoops. Constitution gives, no, no, the Constitution never gives automatic, but the Constitution states, see, because it doesn't, see, <laughs> when you read it, right, the Constitution doesn't make automatic, as we say, you don't become an automatic citizenship. If you go to the immigration laws, there's a process for application to be registered. It provides a uh, 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 you say it's a qualification, like winning, like like you like you have something, right? I, I, I was trying to use the right legal word. I don't remember it right now. 
because I was just jogging home, right? Not for this, but just coming home as part of my exercise. Oh, you get it. You get it. Make me feel good. And say you jog home just to get the show. Come on, man. Wake with me a little bit. <laughs> Wake me a little bit, yeah. What you say, Sam? Does he? Why don't he just wake me a little bit? I mean, he had me going. <laughs> right. No, I'm saying to you. I was listening while I was jogging, but uh, uh-huh. I'm just simply saying that. But when we say that, that you know, women are discriminated in the Constitution, it does it, it does not happen. I think if we actually lay out uh, the the, uh, the what the what the Constitution says and what the law says, okay, because. Even for some things that I hear women, I mean, the argument made concerning the right of men. If you go even to the Constitution where we use this thing that a, that a woman married to the human man, first we have to look at what is the purpose of it, but that's a longer discussion. Yeah, let's, let's, look leave at that it. let's leave that one right now. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying, you, I'm showing you. And nowhere in there it gives the man the right to transfer anything. It's, it's a right that is given to a woman. Because it says if you are married to a human man, you have this right. It doesn't give it. It doesn't require a man to transfer it to her, in the sense. I and I think that we absolutely need immigration reform. I'm, I mean, I've been preaching for 20 years. We need it now, like yesterday, because this is the imbalance in our society. And we're creating a buck up. Everything buck up goes for my immigration thing. And I think, in fact, I de- I'm going to depend on the free national movement to advocate for real reform, because it's not going to come from the PLP. And so... Uh, well, I think, I think they've that, already called for that, and I think they'll continue to advocate that. I think I heard right, them calling but, for that. But I don't want to run on this, but I'm simply saying that no. if we, I think we have, to, uh, we have to have a look at the Constitution and what it really says as to oppose to what we've been said. I've stood in the front of the Constitutional Committees with these very same questions and had them come back to me and say, yes, you're right, but... There is no but when it comes to the Constitution. It is what it is. Thank you very and it, much. And, and anyone in constitutional law, this, it disappoints me when I hear QCs and KCs especially say the Constitution discriminates, when the Constitution is impossible for the Constitution to discriminate. And, 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 and it also gives a pathway for laws. And right now in laws, which is not where, where, the, where, the, where the transaction happens, nothing prevents the government today from passing a law that simply says that a child has a right to be registered as citizenship. Those are protections in the Constitution upon birth. That is the immigration. That's the immigration law. And I think when we talk about building a Bahamas, we need not to transpose different arguments upon each other. I, got you. I wish I was in order, Britain thinking. No I just wanted we to get that more. in before. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you so Take much. Care. Uh, let me read these quick texts, then I'll let you respond, Senator. On the on the myth- mythological unicorn called Patriarch Key. There's no one ever display what? Okay. I want to wish my mother Rosita Duvalier happy birthday from her son Zane Vaughn. Tell her she is the best mother in the world. She from Bimini, so she she knows she could cook. Yeah, but wait, listen. <laughs> I had some stew fish in Bimini. Oh my goodness, that was seasoned right. Oh wow. Uh, great show as usual, Pretty. You know what caused domestic violence? Not checking your woman phone. But it's that lie women was telling for over one million years. That lie is that's your child. Now see, that's now see you, you're getting, you, now you see. Let's take a break. When we come back, we can we can wrap up and we have some talk. See, I got to produce this. Get me out of trouble every time I get myself in problems. This is Pearly, Guardian Radio, Talking Heads. I'm filling in for for Naughty today. We'll be right back. <laughs> Your pumpkin favorites are back at Dunkin'. Indulge your pumpkin passion with fresh-baked pumpkin spice donuts, mouth-watering muffins, and delightful munchkins. Or sip a Dunkin' Pumpkin Spice Signature Latte made with a rich blend of espresso, pumpkin spice, and vanilla flavors, all topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. Available hot or iced, Dunkin' offers the ultimate pumpkin coffee experience. Head to Dunkin' today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Planning for Christmas couldn't be easier with Kelly's House and Home. We have a fantastic range of gift ideas for men and women and all the latest toys for the kids. Our Christmas department is filled with trees, ornaments, lights, garland, and so much more. We have everything you need to keep your family Christmas traditions alive. Check out our holiday shopping guide on kellysbahamas.com. We make shopping easier for you with online shopping and in-store pickup. Kelly's House and Home is open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday and from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Happy Holidays from Kelly's 
Riley's House and Home. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. Play with Island Games, we making dreams come true. Play with Island Games, we paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market, you get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy, and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games, we put in Bahamian's voice, guaranteed to play Island Games. We like them mother jokers, we've been here from the start. From the bike to computer, Island Games, we can make your dream come true. We play it with Island Games. Get ready for an electrifying experience. It's Scotiabank's People's Choice John Canoe Practice Parade. The Scotiabank team kicks off the festivities at 7 p.m. with unforgettable entertainment. Feel the rush as seven A Division groups practice on bay right after the magical Christmas tree lighting ceremony. At 9 p.m., come dance to the John Canoe with your favorite group in a practice rush. Scotiabank proudly presents the People's Choice Practice Parade Thursday, November 30th in Rawson Square. Juicy fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, and a hot buttery biscuit for only $5. That's genius. Part of the KFC Genius Menu, the KFC $5 Snack Box delivers on flavor and value. Need to feed more than one? KFC's Great Picks has got you covered. Packed with four thighs and four legs, fried to golden perfection, plus four buttery biscuits for only $20. More genius. Hungry for deals? The Genius Menu at KFC. It's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up to the minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. And we're back. Wrapping up here at Talking Heads. This is Pearly filling in for Naughty with my lovely guest, Senator the Honorable Maxine Seymour. Um, I listen about a lot. I, I listen to a particular caller who's been and, and, and talking about the feminist movement and all that. And, and while personally I'm not a great f- fan of the, what, we, what I know as the feminist movement back in the 70s and 80s and what has evolved to something a little different now, is that I still believe that, that I don't care what you call the movement, I don't care where you think the country going, the world going, all that, you still can't hit a woman. No. You still not be hitting children. And so let's take away that feminist stuff and let's take women off the table. Children. Children. What are we going to say now? Be, you know, we be, be beat up be, be, because they're they in a movement. Children are innocent. Children are in, 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 in you, they, they, they're they sponges. They take from you. So what you give them is what they learn. But I know there's some concerns that you have when it comes to, to, to battered women and shelters and all that stuff. Um, and that and that something should be happening in this country right now for some women, some place for them to go to. Correct, because more and more, of course, advocates and people who work with with women and you know children, they keep encouraging them to leave, not to take that abuse anymore, and to come out of it. And in fact, well, statistics unfortunately show that women leave up to eight times before they actually leave, and so. This is why, and you know, you still need, of course, the police and everyone else to be patient with them, to take the report for family members to be patient with them, because yes, sometimes they may go back, and you might be like, oh, well, I'm not, you know, checking for her no more, she already healed, and he did all that to her, and now she's gone right back, but the thing is, where else is she going to go? And that keeps coming that is, up, an issue, because yeah. everyone keeps saying, leave, 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 but many women, when they sleep on their pillows at night and they're crying and they know they're bloody, their you know, stomach, everything is hurting on them. You know, the kids in the next room not sleeping because they can hear what's going on. But she recognizes that she is in a home, the electricity is paid, they're pooling their resources, there's running water, the kids have, you know, the access to the refrigerator, the stove. And so, yes, I am being beaten, but I don't have, I'm being emotionally and mentally abused, but I don't have anywhere to go. And this is why I keep saying to the government, please, and this goes beyond partisanship. It hurts my heart to know that the government over the past two years, first in the previous budget, budgeted $500,000 for a women's shelter. And then by the midterm budget, they removed the $500,000. 
Then in the last budget, they put the $500,000 back. Well, first of all, $500,000 is not enough. That's the first thing. And secondly, the priority with which, listen, I saw the government in action in West Grand Bahama and Bimini. So when they want to get things done, they, this administration can get things done. It's been two plus years just dragging on about this shelter, the shelter, the shelter. $500,000. I still haven't seen a request for proposal go out to help build it. I haven't heard that any, you know, crown land or anything has been officially transferred to this cause or anything like that. And on top of that, I am insulted by the fact that this same year, $500,000 is being spent on holiday decorations. So for a few weeks of festivity, we're going to put up some lights and decorations, and that's the same amount of value you're placing on saving the lives of women and children in a shelter, $500,000 for a shelter, $500,000 for holiday decorations. Where is the priority? You need millions. Women and, but exactly. And this is important because the uh, cases of domestic violence have increased in recent years. But women need somewhere to go, and not just somewhere to go to be, you know. But they need psychological support when they go there. They need to build capacity training. They need to be able to be safe and to just kind of get on their feet again. And so that needs to be a priority because two trips alone, one trip alone might be $500,000. What about the women? I'm going to give this caller 30 seconds because we got to come off for of five. 30 seconds, you got caller. What you got to say? Go ahead. Hello, are you there? I guess not. Right, and so I really encourage the Davis administration to place greater priority on the women. You know, recently we passed the Protection Against Violence Bill, yes. and many advocates have spoken out to say that it doesn't comprehensively provide the level of protection that they desire, especially after working 10 years on the gender-based violence bill. And so I'm hoping as well that the government will put greater priority on bringing those amendments to Parliament so that the Protection Against Violence Bill can be expanded so that women and girls can have greater protection. Because we are not second-class citizens in the Bahamas. We need to be protected. Women and girls don't deserve violence. They don't deserve abuse. But as a government, it's our job to provide the protections necessary, especially for the most vulnerable. Okay. I, ah. Texas, I'm going to read your Texas after the news. It's 5 o'clock. Um, Senator, I had a ball. Thank you so much and for I having so happen, me. I hope we, we, this is something we have to talk about some more. So one day we'll get you back here so we can talk about this some more because we have to take this thing serious and we have to protect our women and children in our country. Thank you so much, Senator Maxine Seymour, for joining me. Thank you it's so much for having me. It's been a fun one hour. It's been a challenging one hour. Call us. We'll, we'll, we'll go five minutes after the hour to have a conversation. But right now, as the news coming up, this is Pearly filling in for Naughty. When we come back, we'll take five minutes to take your calls and then we get into sports. Thank you for listening. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Like I said, sure happy it's Thursday. The time to talk some sports. Let me just, I always promise to read the texts, so I'm going to spill over two seconds and read these texts. Make sure you let the senator know, oh, this one, we have 14 children, 12 daughters, who grew up in this home, and no one is advocate for women and children more than he is. That's a lot of kids. Pretty, now I saw a woman, biggity, especially the set five foot two. Why not a woman would be in your face? Jesus. That's true, you know, short woman, really big and emotional. Um, I'm tired of this one-sided conversation about domestic violence. I went to the police six different times to complain abuse about. When I got tired and lashed out, I was arrested. This balance in conversation and in law swings one direction. There's enough stats to prove women are in this. I'm not, you know, and just to say this quickly, we didn't run away from that, you know. We said that men do get abused as well, and we got to stop the violence on both sides of it. Yeah, when men, some men more embarrassed to go, and then when you go, the police can laugh at you, they can tease you. Uh, not all, some will laugh at you and tease you. And then so men, it's it's hard. It's hard. So I understand that. And this one call, I promise. I can take this one caller. One caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on there. Hi, how are you? Thank God for life. How are you, ma'am? I'm okay. Um, just let me know if this is a fact or not, because I've heard this talking around, and the lady just mentioned it a while ago. 
Yeah. Are they talking about a hundred thousand dollars for decoration for a Christmas tree? Is that a fact or just a five hundred thousand dollars was spent for Christmas decorations? Was spent or they plan to spend? But they decorate the place now, so they probably don't spend that. What what is what do you mean five hundred thousand dollars? Half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. Five so zero zero yeah. comma zero zero zero. Five hundred thousand dollars, half a million dollars spent on Christmas decorations. Daddy was allowed to get away. They the government, like the deputy prime minister, said they could govern the way they see fit. So the opposition had no objection to that. I'm sure the opposition would have said something about it. I, I think I don't remember. I didn't see anything. I'll have to check, but I'm sure the opposition will say something. I know I have a problem with it. They should have a problem. They the one who govern for us. They should well, have a problem to say something about it. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, well, rumors. So after I heard it on the radio again by this lady, I trying to figure out if it's that supposed to be true. Well, I, I understand it's true, um, and I understand that that is what has been spent. Off and I heard it like you know it was just some. No, one silly, one thing with this government, they are not have a good time. What kind of nonsense is this? Okay, you got me saying something I need to say. I get in trouble. I talk in sports. I gotta go. Okay, bye. Thank you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> Today in sports history. <laughs> Listen, if y'all want to call to talk sports, 323-6232, 325-4316, and you will text me by the line that is powered by BTC, 4224796. Today in sports history. Today is November 30th, 2023. In 1971, ABC TV aired Brian's Song, the movie about the Chicago Bears' Brian Piccolo and his friendship with Gail Sayers. In 1991, the first Women's World Cup of Soccer, the U.S. team defeated Norway 2-1. In 1992, the video NFL Country by various artists was certified gold by the RIAA. In 1993, the NFL awarded the league's 30th franchise to the Jacksonville Jaguars. In 1996, Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls, scored his 25th, 25th, 25th NBA career point. He was only the 10th player to reach the mark. In 2005, the Boston Bruins traded Captain Joe Thornton to the San Jose Sharks for Marco Sturm, Wayne Premier, and Brad Stewart. Uh, today's sports quote, you learn you can do your best even when it's hard, even when you're tired and maybe hurting a little. It feels good to show some courage. That's Broadway Joe Namath. Broadway Joe Namath. Call up. We talking sports. Yes, call you on there. Hello. Very soon, clearly. Yes, sir. I talk in sports too. I'm retarded. How you doing? I re- oh, Lord, Papa, how you coming on with me like that, boy? No, I mean, you make sure I emphasize that you talk in sports. No, I because I have so certain... I, I didn't know... Hold on. How long we have to be, have to wait like every three or every two weeks. I mean, every week to hear you on Thursday. No, people be Johnson to hear you. <laughs> Everybody have their own style. I hear, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. What's up, the Papi? Everything cool. Apparently, I don't want How you feel about the... The celebration that I stick, trying to stick on sports. Give me a second. Um, I put the brand name Stevie. Stevie Gardner. I like Stevie, but uh, I love the gal more better. What's your name? Um, Shawnee. Shawnee. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Miller. Bo- uh, Rebo. Re- Rebo. Uh huh. Yes. And um, um, I really, really like. Her. I like how she's be talking with God every time she went all loose. She give God thanks and praise. It's not like she's bigger than the bomb. Yeah, name. man. She's I'm a demon. Saka. Huh? Saka. Yeah. Uh huh. Saint Yeah. Yeah, and I'd be proud of her. I really, really like her. Okay. But I kind of agree with some people saying. And What is that? What are some people saying they, that you agree with? They ain't 50 yet, and they on the Jubilee. Jubilee celebration. Yeah, but what they've accomplished within our 50 years. See, it ain't been your 50 years. What happened from between 1973 and 2023? So, so between the 50... Fifth... contribute, we could have been on it too, although we... Yeah, just, uh, I know why I ain't there, because I contribute some things. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't talk about that already. Pop, my God, I can talk to you. Hey, listen, hold on. Uh-huh. Pretty, pretty. So, you okay with them being on the list? Yes, ma'am. They accomplished things. And she's the first female. She, I'm not the first, but she's the one who gave us our, our, um, Olympic rec, Olympic medals and stuff. Yes, they accomplished I, I good for the Bahamas. I just thought, like, I, I just thought, like, when Sean McQueenie, them say they make up that lesson, and ain't nothing to do with politics and all of these is behemoth and stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out. No, like, it's I, what I you've done. The Bahamas, I'm trying to figure out if they honoring 
Loretta Butler because she had the coup against Minnis and No, 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 no. She was the she was a, get it for? She was the first female leader of the opposition. Whether how she get it or not important. Oh, she was the first female mind. leader she, of the opposition. She, on him in the parliament and she wasn't the leader of the party but just in, 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 in the house. In, in the house, yeah, that's all. Okay, yeah. So who get the contract for these lights with a half a million dollars? Now you see, Pop, Papa, Papa I don't know that. Papa I talk in sports I gone. I could we could talk about that later, Papa. See you later, brother. I don't know I don't know who get the contract. I don't know. But see today is flag football day. This is flag football. Every Thursday, we talk flag football in the first segment of our sports. Just quickly, in the sports section, USVI downs the Bahamas. The Bahamas falls 2-1 and group play with one point. BYFFL, Bahamas Youth Flag Football Playoffs and Championship set for Saturday. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Yep. And defenders, spikers pick up wins in NPVA action. You probably know Volleyball Association. That's what's happening in the, in the Guardian Sports. Murphy, where you been, man? I had other sports activities. Well, that's when you use a real, that's when you use a real quote unquote. You can't say soccer mom, sports mom. I'm a mom. sports mom because I do too many sports. So who you got here with you there? and we've we've changed up how we do it now. We bring in stars off the league now. See, we, we can see you and Jason every week, but when we start at the stars and give these kids the exposure that they deserve, um, exactly, and so people can hear what they're about and why they love the flag football. That's why we're here with them every week from going forward. Who you got here with you? So today we have two athletes from our 10 to 13 age division. We have Jaden Deal Coakley, uh -huh. which is my son. That's your, that's your baby. Yeah, my baby. Uh -huh. And then we have Nyla Monroe. Hi, Nyla. She, and Nyla's Hi. on the undefeated team in the 10 to 13 age I division. Gotcha. Um, she's also one of the big catchers, too. So okay. she's a very good wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have... Her daddy, who is also a coach in the 10 to 13 age division and the 14 to 17 and age division. And he doesn't division. coach her? No. Because you can't coach your child. We don't, don't let our... Know that, right. yes. yeah, right. We don't allow our yeah, that's, coaches that's to stuff. coach their children. Coach, what's his name again? Reginald Monroe. Reginald Monroe. Yes, and we okay. have Reggie. But so, is you 10 to 13? 10 to 13. Are they bigger than me? They're bigger than me. Okay. <laughs> There's some big kids. Okay. So what's that? Who every this the championships is this weekend? So this weekend we technically have it's actually we're calling it our championship day, but like championships, but it's actually playoffs and championships. Yeah. Championship so we day. start off our day with our playoff games, and then they'll lead into um, at two thirty. We'll lead into our championship. Okay. And so when it comes to our six to nines, we only have one playoff game, and then our number one seed has already um, advanced to okay, the championship. Okay, yeah, so they play. So the one player will play the number one seed. Correct. Okay. And then when it comes to 10 to 13, because we have five teams, there will be about two playoff games. No, three playoff games. I can't remember. Hold on. Two? Two. Two playoff games. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then that will lead into our championships. And then the 14 to 17 will have one, two playoff games and okay. then lead into our championship okay. games. And so, so young man, let me talk to you. Home. First yes, of all, I got to get used to this hairdo. <laughs> what school do you go to? I go to Boost Academy. Okay, so you could wear your hair like that. I know you couldn't go out like that in sock. I ain't gonna let you. <laughs> so, what position you play? And and uh, quarterback, wide receiver, uh, tight end, and safety. Oh, you all you all around a Desmond Howard type guy. You like playing? You like the sport? Yes, sir. And so but you got a loss under your belt, right? I got one. Just to one? My, yeah. Okay. To yeah. my daddy. To your daddy then? Yeah. And, and this young lady across the hall from you, she got anything to do with that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about it, darling. Let, let's, let me and you talk now. So you, you're a wide receiver? Yes, sir. Okay. And you like playing football? Yes, sir. And you rough up the fellas? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And how do you like playing it? I yeah. enjoy the experiences that I get. So you get a couple of touchdown catches? Yes, sir. Yeah. This young man didn't try to hold you, eh? Yeah. He tried. <laughs> you just blow right past him, eh? No. Just blow right past him. So what football team do you like? I don't really watch football, but I, I like the sport. You just like the sport, but you don't pull for So you should start watching the Miami Dolphins, you know, that'll work. Oh. Uh, and what team you pull for? Pittsburgh, eh? Yeah, Steelers. I can see that. You look like a Steeler fan. I think it's his mom's. What you're I did, I'm going to say that his mom's influence. Yeah, 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 we know that. That's that negative influence. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The whole house has to be a Steelers, or you might well, not you be able cooking. to, or you might not be able to live in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so the dog, the cat, and all the children and the husband, everybody has to be a Steelers. Oh my goodness! See, I'm glad I never meet you tomorrow because we just go fight. Because I, I dolphin all the way. 
My house split. My, my, I'm, my, I'm a dolphin. My son is a dolphin fan, and my other son is a, 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 a Latter Falcon fan. So we have some interesting conversations. Coach. Hey. So which team do you coach? Miami Dolphins. Is there any other team? I tell you. I tell you. We might be going to this. We might be going to the Dallas game. Working on that. I have permission to go. You know, I like I don't have to ask nobody. That's how come I get permission to go. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. I just have to be back. I just cannot miss Christmas Day. So I understand Bahamas has an eleven o'clock flight. So we're working on some things. Is that game in Miami? In Miami. Yeah, it's Miami. Uh, in Miami, yeah. We can embarrass the Cowboys. Yeah. You'll be traveling then. So as a coach, tell yes. me um, t- tell me about your experience as a coach and, and how do you, you know, what got you into it to begin with? You played football? Well, I, I played um flag football and well, it'll be coming to you right night now. Um, and after we won with the Avengers, I think that was about two years ago, uh-huh. we, I basically retired and I really focused more on basically training the kids. Okay. But I really got involved because my son was interested. Okay. Um, so I've been a part of the league basically. So where's your son now? Is he still in the league? He plays for the league, yes, but he's he's away at school now. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. College? No, no, high school. So okay. his school. son is the one that we were talking about that one time when Jason was on with me, and Jason said that one of our coaches, we have a kid that's off in school oh, playing yes, football, yes, and yes. his very first time in pads yes, yes, playing quarterback, yes, yes. he ended up getting a t- you know, like throwing a touchdown and all that. Yes, this. yes. That's his son. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. So he'll be joining you in Texas? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, how's he? How, how has it been his first year experience? Because season over now, right? Season is over. Okay. They they got kicked out in the semis. Okay, that's not yeah. bad. Yeah. And he was the starting quarterback, or he didn't start, but he used to play like the majority of the games. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it was a good experience. Yeah, it's definitely. Good what experience. year is he in school? He's a sophomore. So you got two more years to prove yes, himself. Two more years. University yeah. of Miami. <laughs> One would hope. <laughs> where's, where's he in school? In Florida? No, he's actually in a school called Subiaco Academy in Arkansas. Oh, he's far. Yes, it's a lot of lights. But that that's that's that area is football country. Arkansas, uh, Arizona. Yes. The, yeah. Nebraska. They're, all around. They're, around they're the big boys. Yeah. Texas yeah. coming down. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And Bill Clinton from Arkansas too. Yes. The, actually, the airport is named after Bill and Hillary Clinton. So, okay. Yeah, super. that's their country. So, you have hopes of playing football in college? Yes, sir. And what college you want to go to? Well, I wanted to go to Oregon, but looking at the prices, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, you know, if you're good enough, you get a scholarship, you ain't got to worry about Oregon, the prices. Yes, sir. You know, all schools are expensive now. When my, my kid went the first time, when I went to college, it was $6,500. When I took my oldest son, it was 37000 By the time oh, I took my second son, it was 43000 By the time my daughter was 53000 a year. So it ain't easy. So I would say you got this and you got the legs. The two of them together should be able to get you where you need to go. So make sure the book's right. Make sure the grades are right. Three point? Yes, sir. High three point? Like middle. Oh, okay, that ain't bad. We can, what grade are you in? Ninth. So, all right, this is this the start. Ninth is the start. This is the challenging year. So in the 10th and 11th grade is the two most important years to get the grades at the right level. By, by, by Christmas, Christmas senior year, you already know what school you're going to. Yes, sir. Basically, so all right. And what's your hopes to do? But I, I don't, I don't know if women can play park football in college. So, are you, are you gonna continue to play flag football all the way through, or are you got other athletics? I will play volleyball. For, okay. Um, college and possibly go to the professional league. So you play for your school now? Yes, sir. And this is Kingsway. Yes, sir. The other school in Fox Hill. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's the school, the school down the road for me. Yeah. But what grade are you in? You're grade nine now. Grade eight. Grade eight? Yes, okay, sir. okay. And you, you enjoy playing? Yes, sir. Volleyball is, your, is the sport that you like the most? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So and that's right behind flag. I mean, yeah, flag, yeah, yeah. I understand. So you're a setter, hitter? I'm a setter. You're setter? Okay. So you're all over the court. Okay. One of my favorite sports has been volleyball, so that's why you see me asking so many questions about it. All right. So, Coach, what can we expect? And we'll get to you who's playing in a second. What can we expect this weekend from your team? From my team? Well, under my 10 to 13, um, we have actually the first game at the gate. Um, I expect for the guys really to be focused, and hopefully we could come away with the victory because Coach Allen, he was already talking smack from, from yesterday. So <laughs> From last week? I, yeah, I'm looking forward to beating that guy. So you're yeah. undefeated. Yes, sir. You've got one loss, and your team has got... 
We have quite a bit of losses. <laughs> oh, they both of them pretty much dominate my team. But, okay, you know it's it's football, so as they say, any given Sunday, so it's any given Saturday here. So, so you just hoping that this will be like one of them teams that when they say scrap into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, I just hope and that the guys the world. just catch a fire and you know we come like, away I with like the trophy. Enthusiasm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, let's get this right. You will be coaching against her. Her team is the dominant team. I but you're not playing her team first. No. Thank God. Th- thankfully. Thank okay. God. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how does he drive home with B? You know, when you are playing the first time, I let her go with her. I let, I let her go with her mom. She doesn't drive home. But with she B. can't ride with you. No sir. No sir. <laughs> no sir. And you don't have to hear about it. No, no. She's a she's an avid trash talker. Okay. Right. Like all day. Like when she wake up in the morning, she be like, okay. So be- why is she playing so cute here now? Beaten today. That's how she opened the morning. Beaten today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. today. Beaten today. <laughs> And you enjoy that, eh? Okay. The only time you could get that one over that, eh? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We have to still play the game. Now, you, sir, how does that drive be home out? Because you're all driving in one car on the way home, right? Yeah. yeah. So how that drive be home when you're, when you're lost to daddy? It's tough. A lot of crying and a lot of screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? But so. trust, trust, this Saturday... I don't know. Same thing. He could talk a lot of smack, same but guess thing. what? Same Trophy thing. could be on my heart, not his. So hold on, same thing? Same so thing what was the score when you played that the last time? Uh, Playing it a little bit? It was not, it wasn't that like wasn't that big of a difference. Uh-huh. So still win. I could tell you it was eighteen and twenty one. They beat me because of her. <laughs> because she's worth two points. Why is she worth two points? Because she's a girl. Oh girls get two points? Yes. So they draw all the points to you then. Like, I gotcha. A touchdown for a girl is eight. A one like one point conversion is two, and a two point is three. See now we just finished having my first hour talking about equal rights for women and all that stuff, and they giving the women extra points. We deserve it. Ooh, ooh. ooh. I don't think you want to approach that subject right off. <laughs> <laughs> I would also say that in our league we don't in our league we don't have a lot of girls right okay. now. Okay. So like on Nyla's team, she's the only female. Okay. Um. Oh, you have Dylan now. Who who's no, your I second girl? She doesn't really come out, but she's still on the team. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So we have most of the time. I think every, in the ten to thirteen, we gave one girl to every team. Okay. So you have your every team has, has the a, opportunity to, to throw the ball to the girl. Use or advance. You know. Is is it your wish at one day to have separate separate leagues or all boys or all girls league or is that how it is in the, in Texas? You playing girls on the teams as well. So when we go abroad, uh-huh. technically there's we can either sign up as co-ed and then have obviously the mixed teams, or we can play just boys or just girls. Um, so when we go to play, we're in the co-ed division. So we play because Nyla's on our traveling team okay. along with Jaden. Okay. So we have boys and girls playing. Okay. Um, but we did play in our very first year. We went off. I think oh, it was why? an. There was a no. There was one team in one of the age divisions that was all girls, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It was a whole team of girls that we played. And on our team was all boys. And the girls beat you up. Oh, they were vicious. Yes, they were very vicious. <laughs> I can imagine vicious. that. I can imagine so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, for some reason, when they play these types, what they get really competitive yes, and really, yes, really. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think girls are competitive in general. No, some things they pick you on. Oh, well, not some me. <laughs> so, who's playing who this weekend? All can right. You, can so, give me some details. Let's start this. Let me know. So, we so have. Let's see producer. I got to looking at me. I'm not ready to play music. Uh oh. So our very first day, our very first game out of the day of the day, sorry, is at eleven thirty, and okay. that is Team Allen versus Team Monroe. Okay. At, which is the ten to thirteen age division, and then we have. Wait, now you're not team. Your team. Kevin. Kevin. And team. Dawkins. Okay, so Team Allen. Well, that was who was with me last week or week before last. No, that was Moss who was here. You Moss, had Moss. Moss, yeah. Team so Moss, Team yeah. Moss was, is next. So okay. that at twelve o'clock we have Team Moss versus. His team, which is Team Dawkins. Don't get upset, mate. Don't 10 get to 13. upset. That should be a slap up. Okay, Ooh. all right. Ooh. Ooh. That should be a slap up, he said. Let me say it again. He said, Team Moss, that will be a slap up. In other words, chalk. <laughs> then uh, we have that. Are you happy with the trash talk? Then we have 1230. <laughs> we have the 6 to 9 age division, and we have Team Dawkins versus Team Sheldine. So okay. my littlest one is Team Sheldine. So we have to win that because I need to bring all the golden trophies home. No. What, what, what do they record now? No, no. Uh, team Sheldine, I think, is in second. Okay. All yeah. Right. So okay. that's that's team that's second playing third. Okay. 
And then at 1 o'clock, we have Team Allen versus Team D'Angelo, which is 14 to 17 age division. Uh And then at 1.30, the winner of our first game, which is Team Allen um, versus Team Monroe, the winner of that is then going to play the top team, which is Team Kevin, which is Nyla's team, 10 to 13. And then at 2 o'clock, we have Team Shavar versus Team Monroe, which is 14 to 17 age division. Okay. And then at 2.30, all of our championship games will begin for our age, to, all of our super, age divisions. Super, super. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Very much so. So next week, Thursday, I only won the champions. Yes. Okay. No so problem. So bring the champion, a representative from each championship team. Expect me to come back. Next week, no, Thursday. No, you're coming back at all. <laughs> all right. Okay. So yeah. if they win, bring him back. If they win, bring her back. Because I, I want to hear, I hear I them out. No, I come back. I want to hear them out. <laughs> but bring the a representative as many from each team. We will we definitely do that. Thursday so we can meet them and the coach, you know. Yes. So no we may not see, we may see, we may, no, we can see you then. Me? Oh. Yeah, we can see you. <laughs> That's I mean, if I listen to these two, we ain't gonna see you. No, no, I coach um, two age groups. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll definitely see you next week. So you had, you're the six to nine age group, is that? No, no, no. That's 14 to 17. Oh, you got the big, you get the big. Oh, big so, and you undefeated in that? Uh, not undefeated, but uh, let's just say it's almost a guaranteed win. You would have to see him on the sideline, by the way. Probably to, like, like, if you're watching him here, he looks very calm, cool, collected. If you stand on his sideline, don't play, don't try to record the game. Because all you're hearing is, did I ask you to do that? And he's screaming and he's stomping up and down. And he's, and we're like, ooh, 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 someone's going to feel that at practice next. Yeah, I mean, there's different ways that you have to communicate to certain kids. Certain kids, yeah, you yeah. have to talk, you yeah, know, yeah, soft. Yeah, yeah. And then certain kids, they, they require a certain volume. Yeah, especially <laughs> in football. Yeah, do. yeah, you have to. Yeah. You have at, to least go at, thing, at least the good thing is he ain't cussing. No, no. Uh, that's a he no got, no and then you get to let when you get to college level, the goes catching like crazy. <laughs> well, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's part of it. Yeah, I have a big mug. All right, so we look forward to seeing the champions next week so we can talk about it. They get a chance to brag on, on the radio. So either I see one of y'all two. I can see both of y'all. One of y'all two You're seeing me. You seeing me. When I You're win, me. I go bring up one name just to make her angry. I, I, I welcome you to do that because you can have if you Come win, you could call her name, you can win, you can rub it in. All right. Fair enough. I know they so, cry. So, so today, when I dropped my husband to work on the way here, uh-huh. he's in the car and randomly starts to like giggle, and I'm like, <laughs> "What happened?" And he goes, "Your son's gonna cry this week on Saturday. Your son's gonna cry on Saturday." And I go, "What? Why is he gonna cry on Saturday? Because I'm beating him. I'm gonna beat him." And I was like, "Well, I don't want my son to cry. I was like, I feel like he needs to win the golden trophy." So my husband goes, "What?" So I see where your head is. So he he's supposed to win over me? And I go, yeah, that's my baby. And I was like, of course he has to win over you. And he goes, well, what about my children? I said, they're not my kids. He's like, yeah, but my kids can't um, lose, and they can't cry, and they can't be upset that they didn't win, so Jaden has to lose. I said, oh, my God. So Jaden, big a seat. There's a lot of smack talking happening in a lot of vehicles, nah, yes. a lot of homes. I, I mean, this is exciting. We'll see. It's we'll a very see. exciting day on Ooh. Saturday. But one thing I do want to make mention of so that everybody knows, our day starts at 11 o'clock, and we have games all day. Okay. Uh, we do have an entry fee for Saturday. It's $5 for adults. We don't charge for the kids. Okay. It's a little, you know, way yeah, for us to you get fundraising. To, you're trying to go to Texas. So you we're need trying to go to Texas. Well, actually, we're money. on our way to Texas. We're not trying. Yeah, we're but I know you way. still need the help to pay But for we it. still need yeah. the help. So, of course, yeah. you know, we would, um, but we would love people to come out and watch and see it. It's an... It's really exciting if you could see our sidelines, especially when the littler ones play, because it's really hot and fiery when the little ones play. Um, but if you were out there, it's an exciting day. And so me, we me, would... Me and Lottie promised to ride through. He's off right. He gets back in time, we're going to ride through. Please. It would be... Okay. Hear it out. You would enjoy So I could get somebody on video crying. Oh. <laughs> I gave it up. I gave it up. I put it for her. I put it for her. Who is crying? You cried twice. I don't know why. I just believe. I just have this feeling that you could be upset. She could be upset. I could be upset. We can see. I could okay. be upset. I blow up a ton of points. Buffy, guys, coach, thank you so much for joining me today. It, it, I look forward to this every Thursday. I have fun with this every Thursday. Thank you for having we'll us. We'll see you next Thursday enjoy. with the champions. This is your boy Pearly filling in for Naughty on Talking Airs on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. When we come back, we can take a look at that Seattle Dallas game today. Give you the picks from Island Games. 
And then I'll tell you who we're going to have the, uh, the final 10. So we'll be right back. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. Your pumpkin favorites are back at Dunkin'. Indulge your pumpkin passion with fresh baked pumpkin spice donuts, mouth watering muffins, and delightful munchkins. Or sip a Dunkin' pumpkin spice signature latte made with a rich blend of espresso, pumpkin spice, and vanilla flavors, all topped with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, and cinnamon sugar. Available hot or iced, Dunkin' offers the ultimate pumpkin coffee experience. Head to Dunkin' today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Go CIBC First Caribbean. We help you to get what you want this year. Spin the wheel of wishes. Spin a trip for two to Miami. Spin the wheel of wishes. You can win loads of cash for Christmas. CIBC First Caribbean. Win with your approved loan. Visit CIBC FCIB slash Wheel of Wishes for more information. Conditions apply. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www. Johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Want to reach your Grand Bahama customers? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the NASA Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. And we're back. Talking Heads here on Guardian Radio. This is Pearly filling in for Naughty. Today is Thursday. We, oh, we're supposed to change the name to Thursday Talking Heads with Pearly A. We got we to talk to Naughty about that. Good stuff. Good stuff. I, I, yeah. <clears throat> I tell people I'm a rookie at this. So whenever people walk up on the street to me and say something to me about they, they've been listening to me or they, they're watching, they're, they're been listening to me and Naughty and, and, and big me up a little bit. I get a little swell head. So yesterday I met a, a, a Mr. Jordan um, who who says he's an avid listener to us. And he and he made, oh, so I, I'm honored to meet you. And I felt so good that, to hear people say that, that we do have people listening to the show and, and getting something from the show. So I just want to say shout out to Brother Jordan. Thank you for listening, my brother. Uh, we appreciate it. I also want to say hello to a special young lady, Kat, who also is listening. Um, says she listens all the time. So happy to have you listening. I uh, love you all. Thank you so much for listening. It, 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 makes it, it makes it even worth coming here to want to do the show that people tell you when they see that they listen to the show. And everybody, Michael and, and others um, uh, who have all been listening to the show for over the years, I, over the months we've been here, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. I just got to get that out there. Just got to throw that out there um, and say that much today. But tonight, we got a big game tonight. Um, the Seattle Seahawks um, at the Dallas Cowboys. I think they, they, they're in Dallas tonight, I think, right? Um, that's a big game. And, and some people are kind of ignoring what it is because Dallas has been looking good. Dallas has been looking real good. Um, playing super – or the Lakers played tonight too. Uh, playing super football. But the Dallas Cowboys, just like my Miami Dolphins. Just like my Miami Dolphins. 
We have not beaten a team with a well, the Miami got a win a team with a team with a winning record because Denver now six and five, so they got a winning record. Even though we beat them and they was and they was crappy and put seventy points on them, but outside of that, the, the Dolphins, not the Cowboys, and Cowboys. I don't think Cowboys beat um, beat a, a team with a winning record in two years. I, I could be wrong, but a lot of people think that and Dallas got. I think what they six and a half point six is it six? No, they four and a half was in nine. They're nine and a half point favorites. That means they're supposed to win by a touchdown on the field goal today. I think Seattle can beat them. I think Seattle's going to beat the Cowboys. I, I, if I'm wrong, you know not even going to let me live this one down. So I, I, I get to say that. I really think, I really, really think that the Seattle Seahawks are going to upset the Dallas Cowboys today. They, they're going to play a team that, that, that has to win. Seattle needs to win this game badly. Dallas can get away with losing this game and still be in the playoffs. But Seattle needs this. They can't go 6-6 six and six right now because what they got ahead of them. All right? They, they, they got some big... I think they got... Let's see, they got some big games ahead of them. So they, they, got, they got to hold on to this game. All right? They got to, they got to beat the Cowboys today because they got... From here, they go to the 49ers. They got the Eagles. Um, then they got the Titans. They got the Steelers, and they close over with the Cardinals. So if they could, if they could between Dallas, the 49ers, and Eagles, if they could sneak one, maybe two wins out of that, one win, that'll put them because I'm, I'm pretty certain I, I, I'm, I'm giving the Titans to see the Steelers and the Cardinals. They probably could be the Seahawks. Will be, the Steelers will be a tough game for them, but they should, they can beat them. So if, in the next, if they go four and two in the next, they should put them at ten and ten and seven. They should put them in a position, maybe. But they need this win tonight. They need this. They lose this, everybody still kiss a goodbye. Dallas can get away with it, I think. All right? Cause, but Dallas ain't got it that easy themselves. All right? I, I, tell you, I tell you Dallas can get away with it because Dallas got the Eagles next week, then the Bills, then they come to my Miami Dolphins for Christmas Eve, cut it. And then you got, they got the Lions, and then they get the Commanders. So Dallas got a rough road, too. They got a rough. So this, this game tonight is going to be, and you know, I, I said earlier that Dallas can get away with this loss. I don't think they can. Because they got, uh, in their next six games, they got possible losses to the Eagles, the Bills, the Dolphins, and the Lions. That's, that's, that's a gauntlet they're going through. That's a real gauntlet they're going through. So that's going to be interesting to see. You know, it's going to be real interesting to see where they go with that. So tonight is going to be a big game. Um, Lakers got a big win last night in, in, in Detroit. They should have been that anyway. Um, they got OKC Thunder tonight in OKC. I think this is the seven game road trip, so they one and one now. And then other games you get Portland and we'll, we'll go through the games in a, in a little bit. And then you get and NCAA basketball is heating up a lot too. And it's heating up a good much. Um I see um um Shaq Lawson, um Philadelphia and Dallas trying to get him. Or is it Philadelphia in the 49ers? Philadelphia 49ers, sorry, Philadelphia in the 49ers trying to get him. Um which which will be ooh, Philly could use him. The Forty Niners get him now. Oh, that defense will just be stifling. That defense will just be stifling. So I, we'll wait to see how it goes. We'll wait to see how it goes. Do you think that the Buffalo Bills head coach should be on the hot seat? They're what five and six team, or six or whatever, whatever their record is. Not looking very good. Um, I listen to ESPN today, and these brothers and, and ladies there continue, continue, continue to big up Josh Allen. He's leading the NFL in interceptions. Yes, he's leading the NFL in touchdowns. And that's what they're putting their argument on, that he can still win a World Super Bowl, that he can still lead this team to something. And I don't see that. I honestly don't. I think this is Miami's year in terms of winning the division. I didn't say the Super Bowl. Don't go say poorly said the Dolphins can win the Super Bowl which I would happily accept. But I think this is their year to win the division. I think this is their year to win a, a playoff game. They could, if they could get their act together, if the defense and the offense could play as a, as, you know, as a unit, they could make a good run. They can make a good run. Because if you really, really, really look at the losses the Dolphins had, and let's look at this, because you know, I, I had time to think about this. Take Buffalo off the table. Buffalo trans, tran, just trampled the, dodge, the Dolphins. They beat us to powder. I, I accept that one. They caught us, division rivals, beat us bad. We lost 
to the Kansas City Chiefs by a touchdown. By a touchdown that the defense scored on a fumble recovery with Tyreek drop. Had an opportunity to win the game and Tyreek dropped his touchdown pass. We, sh- we gave up 14 points to Kansas City in the first half as, as the, how the defense did, but basically shut them down in the second half. In Kansas City. In Kansas City. We went into Philadelphia. How many teams went into Philadelphia and won? What happened to Dallas? What happened to other teams? Went into Philadelphia and, was, and, and we gave them a run for their money. We gave them a big run for their money. And I'm looking at the stats of it because I don't wanna I don't wanna run on and say I, I talk in craziness. Okay? I don't want to run on and say I don't know what I'm talking. We lost 31-17. They beat us. 31 to 17. Two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. But we dropped some balls. In Philadelphia. How many teams played them played Philadelphia? Philadelphia get one loss. We beat who put in front of us. Who the schedule put in front of us, the Dolphins beat. Who they put in front of us, the Dolphins beat. So I think this is the Dolphins year for a playoff. I think the Dolphins have a good chance of winning that division, and I think they will. You get the Jets one more time. We can spank them up again. We get the Bills in the last day of the season. You spank them up. And Dallas coming for the Christmas present. So let's see how it goes. Let's do the picks by Island Games. Uh, bet responsibly. Um, $250,000 they're giving away. You just got to drop $20. And you're in, entered to win things from a car, trips, cruises, all kinds of things. So gamble responsibly, game responsibly. But sign up to Island Games. Deposit $20 and you're entered to win two. Over 250000 in cash and prizes. $50,000 cash. Toyota. Cruises. Trips. Las Vegas. So get in there. Let's do the picks. Get in there. Let's do the picks. Ah, all right. First thing, Seattle at, 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 at Dallas. Dallas is a nine and a half point favorite. I take the money line. I would bet this two ways. A, I bet in this that Seattle beat them in the money line, and I'll take Seattle in, in the points. I'll take Seattle in the points. If Dallas was to beat them, we got the Lakers at the Thunder. I take the Lakers. The Thunder six and a half point favorite. I still take the Lakers tonight. Uh, Portland at Cleveland. I will take the Cavaliers tonight. Um, I would just do the money line. Um, the Brooklyn Nets at the Charlotte Hornets. I will take the Nets and the money line eight and a half. The Detroit Pistons and the New York Knicks. I will take the Knicks tonight. Uh, Detroit may have some pride after that, and the way they talked about their loss to the Lakers last night, I think they'll give it a good fight. But I think the Knicks will take them. The Heat at the paces, I'll take the Heat and the point and the spread, two and a half. Um, Atlanta Hawks at the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, boy, at home, you know what? I take in the Spurs and the points. The Spurs and the points. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks at the Chicago Bulls. I'll take the Bucks on the money line tonight. Uh, the Utah Jazz at the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'll take the Timberwolves tonight. And last or last, the LA Clippers at the Golden State Warriors. The Clippers playing good ball. But I go with the Warriors tonight, and I take in the Warriors and the points. Rich Eisen is up next. He's going to talk to you about the Dallas-Seattle game right after the break. We go to the break. When you come back, Rich Eisen is the final 10. It's been a fun two hours. We got some good stuff in. We talked. We got a little excited. Uh, Good to be here. See you tomorrow at 5 o'clock with Naughty, and I'll see you next week Thursday on Thursday Talking Heads with Pearly. It's been fun. Take care and be safe out there, people. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets, at KFC, we hand bread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets, in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. Wherever you are in the world, Cleveland Clinic's world-class care is here for you. From Ohio to Florida to London, Cleveland Clinic treats thousands of patients every year. Ranked number two in the world by Newsweek. You can trust our caregivers to enhance your experience across each step of your treatment journey. 
for every care in the world. Learn more at clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Refined style with elegant taste. The fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video, want to step out and look great, then fine threads is your place. The fine style with elegant taste. Then fine threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place. Ciao! But there will be can on this year with that new festive giveaway. You can win cash, an iPhone 15, get a bill paid off, PS5, all kind of things. Apply for a loan or an ASU savings account, and you could win. Try our call them now. Yeah? 356 7764. You've tried everything. Asus with your mother's cousin, sister's auntie, and even hiding your money under your mattress. But is your money safe? Your Bahamian dollar deposit in a member bank or credit union is insured up to $50,000. If anything happens, your deposit up to the insured value will be returned to you thanks to Deposit Insurance. Visit Deposit Insurance Corporation at www.dic.bf. Protection for your money, guaranteed with DIC. Play with Island Games, we making dreams come true. Play with Island Games, we paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market, you get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy, and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games, we put in Bahamian's voice, guaranteed to play Island Games. We like them mother jokers, we've been here from the start, from the bike to computer. Island Games, we can make your dreams come true. We playing with Island Games. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. This, folks. Talk about exciting. In terms of shows like this one, in the endeavor that we take part every single day in the mosh pit of conversation, sports talk, takes, and opinions. This is what we call Christmas Eve. And what I mean by that is the Dallas Cowboys playing a football game on one of our work days. That's Christmas Eve because what's Christmas is tomorrow <laughs> the reaction to a Cowboys game on a work day? Yeah, an actual work. You know, I know they play on Thursday night on Thanksgiving. That's not a work day. I mean, for me, it is, but for most of America, it is not. But for us, we get to chew up the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. uh, who are they playing? Who are they playing? This. Oh, that's right, the Seahawks. Um, we get to chew that up, and then the reaction to it. Get your damn act together. That is correct. Tonight on Prime Video, which you can see right here on Roku. Can't wait. Cowboys hosting the Seattle Seahawks. What? And it's the Cowboys oh. coming in on a red-hot streak, hmm. taking on the 6-5 and five Seattle Seahawks, and thus on the line tonight, the narrative that has surrounded the Dallas Cowboys, the narrative you would like to discuss, TJ, is... <laughs> Just how good is this team when they're playing like this? They are A+. plus. They are Super Bowl worthy. Dak Prescott is, in fact, playing like an MVP quarterback. If Mahomes had the numbers over the last six weeks that Dak Prescott has been having, if Jalen Hurts had the numbers over the last six weeks, and Josh Allen, and just name them, name elite quarterbacks. Is Dak elite? In this league. Name elite quarterbacks in this league. If Brock Purdy oh had the numbers goodness. over the last six weeks that Dak Prescott has been putting up there. Most valuable player conversation. But for Dak, we need to keep seeing it because there's that other narrative. And this one cannot be denied. It's the one that the Cowboys bristle at. My playmaker was asked this very question on game day morning on Sunday, and he got 
pissed. He doesn't want to talk about this because it's not right based on what they've been playing over the last six plus weeks. It is the annual crowning of a team that is peaking to say, for some, who have they really beaten? Because tonight, tonight, the Dallas Cowboys have an opportunity to win a game against a team above 500, which they've done only once this year. Which team have they beaten that came into their house or they went into their house above 500? The answer is the New York Jets in week two. <laughs> That's it. When they beat New England, was New England above 500, Chris? No way. All right. <laughs> the Giants couldn't have been above 500 oh, in week shit. one because, you know, they were 0-0. Uh, and they were most decidedly 0-1 after that 40 to nothing shellacking on opening night. The Los Angeles Chargers were at 500 when the Cowboys came into this house and beat them by three just up the road from us. The Los Angeles Rams, were they above 500 in week eight? What about the Giants in week 10 and Carolina in week 11 and so on and so forth, Washington? As a matter of fact, if you think about it, you know, um, the Dallas Cowboys have just tarred and feathered at home. Uh, the uh, Amtrak Acela route in the, uh, the Northeast. Yep. Boston, hmm. New York, <laughs> D.C. Their only missing piece oh, is in week 14 one. with Philadelphia coming to town. But tonight, in advance, the Seattle Seahawks at 6-5, and five, and I proffer to say this. When we open our gifts Christmas morning tomorrow on this program, that narrative will still be in effect despite the Seahawks being above 500 because of the way they've played. You guys got to beat them up tonight, sir. I to mean, avoid that, but you don't care. You don't care, don't and you shouldn't care. care. I don't care about a you narrative. Shouldn't care. You shouldn't care about narrative. You know what I'm going to say? A narrative. Is that right? I'm going to work blue a little bit. Yeah, who cares? You a narrative know what? is there, what? Because no matter what the narrative is, Rich, the goalposts, as we know, will always be moved back when it comes to the Cowboys. Mike, no I think we've got a do. new drop. Oh. we got a oh, new oh, drop. Oh, this is your way of saying... <laughs> about this narrative, whether it matters or not. Hit and it. let's see how Earth responds to that. We'll see how <laughs> Earth responds to this Cowboy-Seahawks game tonight. <laughs> we will. Uh, I thought you were going to go with the other one. No, we right? can't. It's a family drop. audience. Oh, right. Sorry. Although I think oh. the GFY <laughs> is something TJ <laughs> would like to apply to this narrative as well. You know, just win the games, man. That's all you. And then for the Seattle Seahawks, because they are playing tonight as well. Boy, do they got to win this football game. Oh, boy, do they got to win this football game. Uh, yeah. And it's not a short week. Again, that's the no, beauty of oh, what yeah, we're exactly. doing in the NFL exactly. every year now. The league Old is taking company. Dallas and another team that plays on Thanksgiving and pitting them against one another for Thursday night football kickoff of the week after Thanksgiving. So we see a Thursday night game where people can't sit there and go, well, you know, it's a short week. And right. No, this is a full week. They've had a full week off going yep. into tonight. No excuses. Zero point zero. Full blue tars give excuses. And if you look at Seattle's schedule, and the fact that they are entering this part of their schedule having lost three of four, that's the issue. They got punked in Baltimore only to survive against a Washington commander's team that had Brian Robinson cooking in front of the 12s, and they survived Washington by three. And, you know, Washington has been nothing but disappointing over the last month. They go to the Rams, get swept by the Rams, give them new life. And then they start the stretch of three games that have San Francisco in it twice. And then when they're done with San Francisco at home, which they got smoked on Thanksgiving night, tonight, and then they go to San Francisco. And after that, Philadelphia strolls in. And in the meantime, look who has come on strong. The sniffing it duo in the NFC, and that duo is Green Bay and the aforementioned Rams who have a tie break over them. The first tie break when it comes to playoff positioning and seeding and, of course, 
whether you get in or not is division. That's the first thing they do. Are there multiple teams involved? Break the division tie. If it's just heads up, first thing, head to head, certainly division. And um, that is no bueno for the Seahawks that they're not only a game in front of the Rams and they would have the same number of losses as the Rams going out of tonight and into the next week. And the Rams have potentially Joe Flacco or DTR and Cleveland in their house.